Hello guys, my name is Christian Castaño and I'm a professional athlete and national record holder for Colombia. I'm also an AIDA instructor, trainer and part of the Alchemy team. The first tip I'm going to give you is to visualize your dives. This is a very nice tool, very important tool that we can use to help you to have a better uh, flow on our dives and to prepare mentally and to make our body like kind of like act on a mechanic way, on an automatic way when we're going for a deep dive. Uh, the important thing about this is that you're not gonna forget to do certain things that you have to do when you're deep diving. For example, uh, when are you gonna take your mouth feel? When are you gonna start your free fall? Uh, it can also help you uh, to stop relying on alarms, which is important. Sometimes alarms, we don't hear it and it can like really mess our dives. So if we're visualizing, if we're maybe counting and or knowing how many kicks we do until we take a, a mouth feel, a free fall, uh, it can help us as well uh, how to do how to do a proper turn at the bottom and it is very important uh, that when we visualize we do it in a positive way to help you as well uh, to relax and prepare you mentally to be thinking that the dive is gonna feel good and it's gonna be nice and we're gonna condition our brain to actually feel good in the dive and I will really recommend you as well that when you're visualizing don't skip the part of the surface and the protocol because when you are uh, you put these things mechanically in your way, all the protocol or the surface, you're gonna not forget uh, to do the recovery breaths and maybe it's gonna save yourself from uh, a disqualification, maybe in a competition uh, and to avoid a blackout or maybe make you come back uh, stronger from a LMC or a, any little problem you might have at the surface. So visual visualization is a really good tool. I will recommend every deep diver and every diver in the world to use it in a positive way, thinking that your dives are gonna feel amazing and don't forget all the safety steps that you're gonna have to do. So as I said, for deep diving deeper than 60 meters or for AIDA, what recommends is for 55 meters, uh, another safety tip will be to do only one deep dive per session. Yeah, this doesn't mean that you don't, you're not allowed to warm up, you're allowed to warm up, uh, but if you're gonna do, go deeper than 60, just stop uh, diving after that. If it's possible, it will be good if you don't do safety either, but sometimes let's say you're going with your body, you're need, gonna need to do safety. So if you're gonna have to safety your body, wait uh, enough time before you, after your deep dive before you do safety for the person. Uh, how long will it be? If you're doing 60 meters, you divide by five, so it should be at least uh, 12 minutes but uh, I will even recommend you to take a little bit longer and to make sure that your body is completely recovered. And if you feel completely recovered, you still need to wait the time because we're not just talking about being tired, but as well of the excess of nitrogen. It did happen to me when I was not very aware of all these rules and uh, all of these uh, tips to help you with safety. I once did uh, in one session, three deep dives to 60 meters and I started to have decompression symptoms. So for me physically, it was possible to dive to 60 and I felt fine and not tired, but then nitrogen will really sneak behind your back and uh, it could cause a big problem. So please don't dive uh, deeper than 60 or 55 more than once in one session. After you take a proper rest, you can do a few safety dives for your body, but uh, be careful not to overdo it. One more tip and something that is very important for us when we're doing deep diving is that we have this uh, maybe when we are deep divers, we, we're going to want to push and to and to pass the point. It's really hard to find that line where you are. Uh, you need not to be scared and keep pushing, but at the same time that you need to take care of your body and, and be aware that it might not be the best way to keep going down because you're getting these signals uh, that you should stop. So my recommendation is that all, you always listen to your body and don't be afraid or, or feel bad if you're gonna early turn. If things are not going well, if you're not feeling relaxed enough, it's not bad to early turn, it's a good decision. It's gonna stop you from having an, a, an injury, a lung injury, a throat injury. Uh, so we don't want to squeeze because if you squeeze, then you're gonna have to stay out of the water for some time. So it is a lot smarter if you decide to do an early turn when things are not going well. It doesn't mean that they have to go perfect, you will, it will be a good thing to assess the dive uh, after every, let's say, 10 meters and ask this question, how do I actually feel? Am I gonna turn, do I want to turn because I'm scared of what's coming next of, next of that I need to go deeper? But to think about the moment, if at this moment I'm feeling good, why should I turn? If at this moment I'm not feeling well, 
then it's completely okay to turn and try again in the next session. Another tip for deep diving uh, will be regarding our equipment. When we're gonna go for a deep dive, and it's something that not uh, many athletes do, uh, is to use a counterweight system. It will always help you to have uh, something that is gonna help you to come easier and faster to the surface in case that something happens at depth. It's something that is not very likely that you're gonna <clears throat> have a problem at big depths, but it has happened. Uh, and it's not good if you have to pull the person from uh, the, with your strength uh, being carried with the lanyard. So if it's possible, use a counterweight. And as well, if, you, or if you're not gonna use a counterweight, I will recommend you to use a, a double buoy so you can have the knots and the equipment safe on one, but then attached to another one, just in case the first one fails. If maybe you have a carabine that breaks, uh, if the line comes out of the knot or you have a problem like that, you always have a second buoy that is gonna help you to keep the setup in place in a safe way. Uh, for a deep dive. It's not really nice when you're doing free immersion, let's say, and you start pulling the rope and then uh, the rope doesn't, uh, you, you're not able to pull yourself and you have to swim no fins up. It has happened to some friends uh, and uh, we should always try to avoid this for a deep dive. It will make the dive really dangerous if the equipment fails. One more tip or recommendation I have to give you is regarding adaptation. So for deep diving, it, this is a very important thing. And in my opinion, there is not really much that you can do on dry to adapt and prepare for deep diving other than empty lung stretching and Uli Yanavanda. Uh, that could be a good base to start doing it. But for when we are in the water, uh, my recommendation will be to do a lot of FRC dives and RV dives. Once you get really good at FRC dives, you try to start uh, residual volume dives. And the reason for doing this is just to prepare your lungs for big pressures that we're gonna feel when we go for a deep dive. But because when we go for one, a deep dive is uh, normally we can just do one per day and then we have to take a few days to rest. But we, if we do a bunch of these FRC or empty long dives, um, we're gonna be able to adapt and repeat many times uh, the same pressure or even bigger, bigger pressures than the pressures that we, we will achieve when we go for a deep dive. Uh, in this way, our lungs are going to be very ready for the day that we are going for an, an actual dive. And in case there will be some tension or, tension or some problems down there, uh, our lungs will be ready for them and then we're going to avoid to have a squeeze, a lung injury, even a throat injury. Um, in my personal case, I did a lot of this kind of diving. Uh, I spent like probably one whole month uh, doing RV dives um, because we couldn't access access depth at the time. And then for when I go for deep dives, because my body was so ready and mentally I felt really strong, I was able to improve my PV in about 10 meters. Um, so in my opinion, this is a really, really good way to prepare, to adapt and uh, to be able to not hurt yourself when you're going for really, really deep dives. One more thing I would like to talk about is uh, overtraining. So it's something that also deep divers have to be very aware of and really careful with. Um, sometimes when we're doing other sports, we feel that we have, uh, after one night's sleep, we have a lot of energy and we are able to go and keep training. Um, but for free diving, it is a little bit different. And I think mainly it's because of this accumulation of nitrogen that is gonna really affect our bodies and our performance. Um, in my opinion, once, uh, or for my body, for my capacity, once I start to pass the 80 meters, I do need to rest every other day. So I, do, I only train every other day. I do one day of deep diving, the next day I rest, and the next day I go for a, a deep dive. Um, I know some people, when you're uh, maybe starting, the normal thing to do would be three days of training, one day of rest, and then they decrease to two days of training, one day of rest. But for really deep diving, I will recommend you to take a, a day off. And it will also help you mentally uh, not to be pushing every day to the maximum. Uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier. And it's gonna make you, in my opinion, to stay at your peak for a really long time. Uh, I have been at my peak for, uh, let's say, even two months going for a deep dive really close to my PV, but every time I was resting uh, one day in between. So that will be my recommendation. Uh, so you avoid overtraining and your performances can stay top uh, for a really long time. 
And the last tip I'm gonna give you, uh, it will be like a, an adaptation or a, a better uh, way to say the, the, the basic tip that we give to all free divers, the, the main rule, the golden rule, which is never to free dive alone. I will say for deep diving, never dive without a body that is uh, capable and competent to do your safety. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to find people that can actually do proper safety and maybe you're with free divers who are not very deep free divers themselves and you still want to do some deep dives. I will recommend you not to do it. Don't put some person whose PV is 30 meters to try to do a 20, 25 meter safety dive. This is also dangerous for the, for the safety diver. So always try to find a body that is a, let's say doesn't have to be completely at your level, but close to it, or at least for somebody for whom uh, the, the safety is not an issue because uh, when we're doing deep diving, it's never 100% safe. So you always want to have somebody who's really strong there to help you in case you need the help. Um, and that will be the last tip I give you. I hope you like the video. See you guys around. Bye bye.